Meet the Austin Healy Sport Club. They like tweeds and beards and beer with soil floating in it. And they think car design peaked in, ooh, about 1968. Meet Abzi and his crew. They like hoodies and trainers and Argos jewellery. And they think the ideal number of speakers in a car is about 68. These two groups are the chalks and the cheeses in the world of the differing car cultures. And we've brought them together to settle an argument. You see, I think this modern obsession with horsepower is absolutely idiotic. A simple, light, well-sorted classic will be more than a match for some youth car with 5,000 horsepower and a big stereo. Yes, and I think the opposite. So the only way to settle this is with a duel. And that duel will take place here, at the famous Prescott Hill Climb course in Gloucestershire. It's one of the most prestigious tracks in Britain, the motor racing equivalent of Vera Lynn. And here comes my car now. I'm sort of guessing that's not your kind of thing. No. No, no not no. at all. What colour is that? Yeah. National Health Service hey. Green, I suspect. If we had a heavy snow, it would be good for clearing that, wouldn't it? Well, you can mock Beard Brigade, but this Peugeot 306 is one of the finest modified cars in the country, with over £26,000 worth of mods, including three TVs, a PlayStation and over 54 inches of subs. And now, representing a time when subs were something we used to fight the Germans... Behold the majesty of the Austin Healey, which is stalled. This is a 1961 Frog Eyes Sprite. That's what you've got to be. Uh, Marvellous. Does it go any lower than that, or is that it? No, it's the suspension doesn't move, it's fixed. Ah, OK. Old it's kind of old exactly old-fashioned. Yeah. In this battle of arthritis against yeah. acne, it's Hammond's group who have the power advantage. Yeah. That's a 3 litre V6 at roughly about 200 brake. That's probably about five times what he's got over there. Possibly. <laughs> but what do you reckon not 60 times? Right about 6.2. Oh, that's nice. In fact, you've probably got a more powerful stereo than he has. Oh. By contrast, the geriatric Healy sports a modest 130 horsepower, almost 100 less than the Peugeot. What about the top speed? Well, again, the gearing would probably bring that down to about 95. That's not so good, to be honest. And the classic car boys were worried about the fearsome brakes on the max power car. Still, we didn't win two world wars by standing around moaning. So, some serious fettling began to make the Healy lighter and more agile. Marvellous. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at the youth centre, things weren't so hectic. You've got four screen. This is the best bit. That's a, it's a colour camera as well. Now, this isn't necessarily going to help us go faster. Not really. Both cars were ready for their timed runs up the hill. We just needed an independent driver. Someone who follows no car culture, who has no age, who has no friends to text and no real L preference. Not a completely convincing start, do you mind me saying that? Sounds good, though. Sounds great. Sure enough, it was quick on the straights, but this mobile Halfords paid the price on the corners. It's sort of a bit James yeah, Bond yeah, filmy, isn't yeah. it? That was enough to worry the Healy chaps. So, uh, you're going to wind yours up and give it a shot, yeah, then? Yeah, that's, that's a good time, but it's not unbeatable. So, the gauntlet thrown down for the antique roadshow. That weight makes it... It really did leap away. Yes, this isn't the coolest the Stiggers ever looked, but in the Healy, he was in good shape through the corner. <laughs> Oh, oh, 
Morning Post. The Healy blitzed the last two turns, but would it be 59.26? Yes, the Beards had won it by a whisker. <laughs> Age, experience, tweed and a little bit of facial hair is what it takes to win at hill climbing. Right, I know which one I'd rather go home in, the one with a roof and a windscreen. <laughs>